I'm Jason Heiner, and next to me is Bill Detweiler, who is about to crack open a Samsung TV. And also here for color commentary, we've dragged in CNET's TV legend, guru, analyst. Please, Jason. David Katzmeyer. <laughs> <laughs> David, thanks for being with us. Yeah, so we, we've never done a television at CES. We've done all kinds of things, right? We've done the Apple Pencil. We've done a BB-8 from Sphero. We've done all kinds of things, but we've never done anything this big. Yeah. And so we right. figured that would be a lot of fun uh, to take it apart and to see the tech inside of a TV since not many people want to crack open the brand new TV they just bought. Now, a little bit of forewarning. Uh, we're doing this a little live. I have tried to pre-cook a little of this by loosening the back panel. Um, but what you're going to see is we haven't seen before. So we're going to rely on cats here to help us dissect a lot of the technology that's inside this. And, and we did crack open. So Bill's been doing cracking open. While you right. do that, I'll, I'll add a little bit of commentary. You did crack open uh, a Samsung TV about eight years ago. We did. Because you've been cracking things open on Tech Republic since 2006, starting back with, uh, right, I remember, the Xbox yep. 360 and the uh, first iPad, one of the first um, iPod minis. There we go. And oh. so when you cracked this open back in, uh, you know, 2012 or so, when you cracked open a Samsung TV, it was one little small board, motherboard That's in right. here. And what we see here is a lot more than that. Yeah, there's a lot more tech in these TVs than there were in the past. Yeah. In this TV on the overhead camera, I, I hope they're able to show, we've got the a power board over here, so the power cord comes in here, and you've got all the circuitry required to that. And then you let's have let's, all let's, the signal let's, processors. We're going to lift this up a little bit and show everybody out in the audience too. So this is upside down. The speakers are here. Uh, the power board is over here. I'm not going to touch any of that stuff really sort of purposefully. It has never been powered on, so, you know, it's not going to shock us. Uh, but you never, you won't always want to be careful with power, uh, power circuitry. And then the main circuit board for all the signal processing, the smart technology, if it's got in, embedded uh, streaming services, those are all going to come out of the chips on that. So yep. we're going to try and remove that, uh, remove this, and actually maybe even get to some of the LEDs that help light this thing up. Yeah, this is a QLED TV. It's got uh, edge lit local dimming around the back. It might actually have a full array. We'll see what's going on back here. But the QLED is interesting too because this is a QLED TV. It's actually a pretty high-end 43-inch TV. We looked it up. It's about 600 bucks. So this TV uses Samsung's quantum dot technology. So on the LCD module itself, which I think Bill's going to probably drill all the way down to see. That's the thing that produces the picture. There's going to be a quantum dot film on there. I don't know. We're not going to be able to see it. They're really tiny. But it's something else that's pretty cool about the inside of this TV. Right here, look at this. We got our speakers. These are downward firing speakers. Uh, straight down the bottom here, you can tell you got a little driver here. Yeah. Um, that you know, again, these things are not on the side; they're they're straight down, and they take advantage of the way the cabinet kind of curves down here. Very good. So, Katz, you mentioned this is about a six hundred dollar. Uh, 43 inch TV, which is pretty expensive. I think we got this uh, before we came to CS on a holiday special, like yep. under $500. But most of the time, they're not that inexpensive. Um, uh, this is a good example of because you do advice on buying TVs every day. This is not a product you would necessarily recommend well, people to buy. A lot of times with the smaller screen size, and again, today, 43 is a pretty small TV. Uh, you know, they're, they're not going to have as good of an image quality as the larger ones starting around 55 inch and up. That's where the manufacturers put their very best technology into it. Samsung's Q60 line here doesn't have the full array local dimming, uh, backlight control that it's better TVs like the Q70 that I like this year have. So at the end of the day, this TV is relatively expensive for the screen size. I'd rec recommend a step down model like the TCL. It's about half the price. Again, the picture quality is not going to be that much worse. Um, you know, again, unless you really want to spend that extra money at this screen size, it's, it's probably not the best value. And, and tell the audience like what um, the local dimming and, and those high-end features, what do they do for you on like this 43 versus like a 55? Right. So on those other TVs, you can change the backlight or cross the screen. You increase your contrast uh, depending on what the screen content is. So that full array local dimming is actually the best picture quality improvement available on these TVs today. This one does not have that. But the backlight, again, we'll see what kind of controls there are in here if we can see any. This has a standard backlight that doesn't have that sort of, you know, customized look depending on what's on the screen. Okay. So, so Bill, tell us where you're at here. Yeah, so we've got the back off, obviously. 
And now I'm trying to take this uh, plate, this probably um, uh, EMI shielding off of the main circuit board. Now the problem is these things really aren't made to be taken apart, disassembled um, by your average hey, consumer. Are, are you, are, is, can I use We might gun? be ready for the, heat, the gun heat gun just in a minute. I mean, I'm, I'm not uh, sure, but we might be right. there. I'll, I'll, I'll let put you it down know. for now. All right. Well, we might do that when we heat the film too. So <laughs> what I'm just going to try to do though, it, so this has plastic tabs in it, just okay. pop tabs. And there isn't really a way for me to get these off without actually probably cutting the tabs or breaking them, which is fine. I'm going to do that. Um, but it, it's going to take me just a second to pop these off here so we can see the chips underneath because that's what I really want to do. Yeah. Um, let you and Katz take a look at that while we keep taking this apart. Look for the LEDs. Look for those panels. It's a good point because when you take these things apart, Bill, you're usually taking them apart to put them oh, so that you can put them back together. Yeah. I'd say over the years, 99% of the things you've taken apart um, you've put back together in working order because part of the reason you do it on Tech Republic is to help people who are interested in technology to learn about the technology and also to be able to repair the technology or not just um, to better understand it. We do it so that the audience can better understand it and so that they can, if they have to repair something in do their own themselves. device, they can do it themselves. So, um, you know, you, one of the things, you know, you've, talked about over the years as we've done it on the CNET stage and as you've written stories about this is one of the things you need is a lot of patience in these things. So, yeah, so you can see th this is being really kind of annoying. Yeah. Um, it's a little plastic piece that I'm trying to push back through there. I'll probably just in the um, essence of time cut it and break it, but that's fine. Which is it won't hurt. To, it wouldn't hurt the TV. It's a, it's a rare thing that you're going to do here, but uh, for the purposes of learning about this, so we, we want to see what's under there. We want to see what chips are right, in there. We do. We should expect to see probably a Samsung processor under there, right? Oh, yeah. Yes. And, and a lot of these things, they're all in the same integrated circuit these days. It's the most efficient way to make it. I'm really curious to see how many chips you're going to see under here. But I'm guessing it's one or two, maybe. There's a lot of HDMI ports you can see. Maybe Bill's got it under his hand there. But there's four HDMI on this thing. And all the signals for the video come in straight to that board. And then they get the processing going all on. Right. And of course, there's a lot of processing in these TVs. There's a lot of smart TV functionality for streaming and things like that. But there's also a lot of picture processing going on. So here we're going to see what we got so there here. there we go. I'm going to set this here so we can kind of see with the overhead camera. Yeah. So All you can right. see the main processor here. You can see a variety of other chips. It's, it's really hard to see what they are, but more than likely you'd have a, uh, a, you'll have the DSP or the digital signal processor. You'll have a wireless chip in there as well. Um, I don't know if we can see them really close. Let me see if I can take this off. There's some thermal paste on here. So this little goop um, sure. helps um, keep the processor cool. It helps transfer uh, the that heat, heat right? from that out toward the EMI shield. So it was and using this thing with that paste. See. It was attached to this, and it was using this thing to help dissipate some of the heat off of that uh, Your eyes CPU. might be better than mine. I can't read what that is. That's why we <laughs> usually use mic um, little uh, magnifying glasses and microscopes to see what they are. I, we, we should probably assume that's a Samsung branded semiconductor. Since yeah. they are now so. one of the few companies that basically does their whole vertical integration, uh, yeah. you know, from soup to nuts, including the panel, obviously made by maybe made by Samsung Display. Actually, they do outsource a lot of the panel stuff. Let's see what's. Yeah, it's really hard to see here. I don't think it's clearly oh. labeled at all. There's a SAN disk. I see. That's got to be memory. A little bit of storage yeah. or memory on yeah. there. No, I can't see how many gigs it says, but. Um, and, and interesting enough, Bill, you did get this off to the point that you could probably put this back on. Oh, yeah, I can put so it back on, good no job. problems. Now I'm going to take off the speakers. They just sort of pop off. Great. It's interesting with the speakers. They have these little um, rubber mounts that help dampen vibration. Mm -hmm. Last thing you want is a fuzzy screen. There's also a lot of these little thin, flexible cables that are on the TV that we're going to try and remove. Yeah, one of the interesting things about speakers and TVs is they notoriously sound like crap. So one of the issues with TV speakers is that everybody wants a TV with nothing around the edge. They don't want anything facing forward. They don't want any forward firing big speakers on the side. Sony tried that a couple years ago. You know, people complained about it. So this is a downward firing speaker, which means it's not ideal for the sound to come at you in the room. These things are pointing down. straight down. And so, you know, most of the sound is, is going to be bounced off the floor, off the walls, whatever you got there, your cabinet. And it's not going to have that ideal direct radiation right into the audience. Now, there are some TVs that do have more forward firing speakers. Sony's been talking about that this year at CES. They actually showed me their modules that are 
two or three times as large as these. Interesting. And I heard the demo of that in the room, and I was actually playing with these uh, uh, larger, um, you know, modules, and it sounds a lot better, you know. Wow. Between the large size, which obviously increases your bass, and the forward-firing nature of the speakers, you got a really good sound. Most of these TVs, the TV at this price point, put a sound bar on it, forget about it. Especially if you spend right. 600 bucks, spend another 100 on a good sound bar. It's totally worth it. Yeah. But with a, another, you know, higher-end TV, sometimes they have better sound. And so there is, we've re also removed the um, yeah, I can uh, hold power board, too. So be careful with that one. I don't want you to shock yourself. That up there. And there's a little bit of insulation because, again, this is the power board, so the contacts don't need to touch the metal on the actual display. And if you look at the TV, so that's kind of it. That's the tech inside the TV. There's the main circuit board, the power board, and then the rest of it is just the display, right? Yeah. So it's just the screen. Um, so they're also a lot lighter than they used to be. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't be able to flip this around. Uh, so what we're going to try and do is remove the front bezel and see if I can't find the LEDs that are actually on this TV. Oh, yeah. Cool. Let's see what we can do actually, here. Cass, could you hand me that one? I'll hold up both Which of one the, 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 the other board there. Okay, here we go. So again, when we cracked one of these open, a Samsung TV about eight years ago, one, there was one board and it was about put the size of a quarter of this. So, so I'll hold up both of these so you all can see that. So there's <laughs> just wanna, you there's just a lot use more the technology gun. than there used to be. All right, let me see here. There's a metal strip Ooh. at the bottom of this. It pops loose, it looks like. This looks like a controller. We see some, uh, some more circuitry here. This is yeah. probably what controls the backlight, controls the LEDs. It might be control to the speakers, although no, those came off of the main thing. So that's my guess. And of course, the LCD itself needs control. All those uh, 4K pixels need to be controlled individually uh, to create the picture. Well, that came loose. Well, unfortunately, we have a our first bit of damage. But that's OK. This is for entertainment. This is for science. <laughs> exactly. um, one of the little cable connectors came loose. Uh, that's not something that I could fix. But this bar, um, so if, this was, if you were doing it on your TV, um, it's probably sending it back to the manufacturer <laughs> buying a new TV, honestly, because this is for the, um, uh, the controller for the LCD panels so, so that are on So this kind here. of activity probably not covered by warranty? Not covered maybe, by warranty. Maybe we're violating Although I've stuff. tried it a few times, I'm but not no, a warranty I, expert, I, don't, you know, but I don't actually encourage people to do this unless yeah. you know it's already broken. Right, right. If okay, you know you something's already broken, if you feel confident, then go for it, right? So you can see the, these are the little... Um, Controllers for each of the panels in here, or each side of the panel. And we're dropping things all over the pit place. And then what we're going to see is if I can get this bezel off the front, and we can kind of see the... Ooh, let me see here. Then I think we could see the LEDs under here. All right, we're, we're so captivated trying to see what's going to be under here. You know, like, uh, like Kat said, it's going to be interesting to take a look at these LEDs that, that do this because this is some of the one of the things we don't normally, you know, get a get a sense of. So it's very interesting. As we said, oh, these we TVs go. have a lot more technology in them um, than they ever have before. They are a lot yeah. smarter. Um, pop pop yep. Yep. Remember that these things are not only powering all the backlights. There's all those chips down there, but because they're smart TVs. They, they need storage, they need software. Uh, there is a whole software stack that runs in these things now. So you've got, um, you know, on this TV, Samsung has its own proprietary software uh, yep. cool that it's running. That this is a TV that can run, uh, as I recall, this can run, that is one of the few TV, TVs that can run the Apple TV app. Yeah, they, they were first to launch with Apple TV app last year at CES 2019, and uh, Samsung got that. And then, of course, throughout the remainder of 2019, other manufacturers came on and added the Apple TV app. So that was a big announcement for them last year. But Samsung has their own proprietary smart TV system. Tizen, they built it up you know, themselves. They're, they're proud of it. Um, there's a lot going on with that system, but there's also a lot going on to control the TV itself, you know. Yeah. Uh, they have, you know, again, the backlight control, the color control, the uh, OSD of the TV itself. Uh, oh, we're going to get to the module here. Let's yeah, see. we're going to tilt this up a little <laughs> bit. Yeah, this is cool. And if we just pop this up. Pop that off like that. A little like cracked that. right here, Bill. That's fine. All right. I think this is, this, like I said, this is for science. All right, yeah, we're, this is, we're just going to rip it right off. It's going completely yep. down on All this right. one. Yep. 
Uh, there it goes. Oof. Wow. All right. Hey, we didn't set anything on fire this year. That's good. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. That's right. The day is young. All right. So we took the bezel off from around the display. The and we can actually, I think, Kat, got if you want to lift that up, I don't want you to and be real careful. We're going to set it back down oh, again. Pull that off. You get this out of here. So Samsung, in a different, we're talking about software. Of course, there's a lot of other software on this and that's stored in this. YouTube, be careful with the glass. Um, Hulu, and a lot of other uh, pieces of software powered by this as well. Let's see what we got here. So this looks like that's the LED. This panel. is so this is the LED backplane. If I don't know if you can see it here, but you can actually. I'm pretty sure those are individual yep. LEDs along the edge here. If They're you, on the side, right? If you tilt it like. Let me see here. I don't know if we can get it through, but if you tilt it just right. Eh. I've been reviewing TVs for 20 years, and I've never done any of this. I've never yeah. gone inside one of these things. I honestly don't know how these LEDs are embedded or what exactly is going on here. I actually expected more like little light bulbs kind of thing, not okay. kind of sunk into this substrate like we have yeah. here. here. So Pop this is, off. is it white because it's bouncing the light off of yeah. that and so then it's pushing it up? What you want to do with any of these TVs is maintain efficiency, and that means capturing as much light as possible, projecting it out uh, through the LCD module, which is buried under here at this which point. Which we're going to we'll show you that in a minute. minute. So you can see the LED strip. Yep. Oh, uh, that's what it is. Okay, so this is not the, the LEDs are actually here on the bottom and yeah, the top. You, yeah. Are they well, on the top or just the bottom? See. Set it down, and then we can pull. I think we can pull this off. Yep, you got Maybe? it. Maybe? Maybe? All right, it's caught. So uh, LEDs oh, have been, you know, a big breakthrough from, uh, from LCD. Just LEDs, as everyone knows, I think it's familiar. Right. They use yeah. a lot less power. Um, they put out a lot more light, and they yeah, are a lot more flexible in the color of the light that you can use. All right, be so careful. I think we found some blast. LEDs, though. Yes, and if we tilt it forward enough, I think this panel will come off a little bit and separate in our hand, maybe. Yep. And wow. You see the LED strip at the bottom. Okay. So there's a strip you can um, this is a piece the very of bottom of this. Clear plastic. There you go. And then a white backing there to help reflect the light up. Yep. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but right here we do have the actual LEDs along the bottom here. Why don't we There's turn it around? Why don't them? we flip it, uh, put yeah. this at the hey, top for it. so we can see it. So if you see, Cass, you want to do a pointing? Yep. Right here, along the bottom here, these are individual LEDs. This is the whole source of illumination on these TVs. Yep. And uh, they are the thing that creates the light. And then, of course, that light gets bounced around and shines through the LCD module, which... Which is... That's, you know, we'll speaking move this of... Enough, and we'll be careful not to hurt ourselves on this. So LCDs are basically a sandwich of so all these materials. All these different layers here. I know there's diffusion layers. I'm not going to speculate on which ones which. There's light guides. There's ways that they're kind of focusing the light from that bottom strip of LCD LEDs. And then revealed finally is the actual liquid crystal module. All right. This is the actual liquid crystal yeah, part this, of the Yeah, absolutely. LCD. This is the thing that if you were to just run power to it right now, there'd be a picture on here. And, you know, it, it has to be illuminated by light, but, you know, there is something there, and that's what creates the image on these TVs. Remember 4K resolution, 3860 yep. by 2140 resolution on here, and, you know, that's 8 million plus pixels, and it's all contained in this thing. Now, now how is that technology different from the... OLED technology, right? So these are basically LCDs illuminated yep. by an, a strip of yep. LED lights. Yep. With OLED, that's not the case. No, so uh, uh, OLED TVs, which by the way, Bill, would be a lot less dramatic if you <laughs> pulled it apart because it's really thin. It's just, you know, the glass and the, and the OLED module. Uh, those use direct lighting. So each right. of the 
uh, pixels, uh, the 4K pixels in an OLED TV, is its own illumination. Okay. And it's, it's direct lighting. They, they just shine right through. There's no backlight involved. There's no LCD, uh, sorry, LED strip lighting involved or liquid crystal module. Nothing to shine through. A much smaller stack. And that is why the picture quality is so good because there's right. no so diffraction. You, the viewing angle is much better on OLED. And, of course, the, pi the pixels can each turn off individually, which creates that contrast and black level. It's a much so like simpler you were process. Saying, Instead of just this one little strip that runs along the bottom, yep. every pixel is putting out light, yep. its own light. Yep. It's not just using this little strip yep. to illuminate up the entire display. And, and it's, it's amazing, actually, that this little strip illuminating straight up from the bottom can magically make the entire picture look a relatively similar illumination. Yeah, LCDs do have uniformity issues where some parts of the screen will be brighter at some points. But generally, that little strip along the bottom is all you need to create this bright image. And the TVs themselves are pretty bright, given that, and very efficient. So that's the key, is this efficiency of the LEDs, not just the slim form factor, the way that they can create a really bright image. We talked about the higher end LCDs before, LED TVs. They have a backlight behind the entire thing. Yeah. So they're, again, illuminating everything coming through this stack and creating a, uh, you know, a picture that's a lot brighter. So that's the big difference between this TV and step-up TVs with the full array local dimming, this is a little bit dimmer, but those TVs can get really, really bright. So there's a lot of complicated stuff that this thing does, has to do to create a really great picture. Maybe yeah. next year at CES, we can crack open an OLED and Ooh. take a look at all yeah. those individual Spend a little more. <laughs> the price needs to come bucks. down a little bit. I, I'm <laughs> yeah. not necessarily sure we're up for footing the budget on that one, but maybe. We'll $400, see. $400, $2,000. $400, $2,000, know. and yeah, this one's nice. probably, unfortunately, toast. Very good. Good work, um, But guys. cool. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun to see what's in these sort of everyday devices, and I think that's one of the things for us um, that we like to see at CS every year is sort of, the devices that we use every day get smarter and smarter. There's more tech crammed into them. TVs, smart home devices, they're all getting more technology as technology gets smaller, as battery life gets better. You can do more, and it becomes yep. ambient. Technology is just in the devices that we use every day all around us. It's ambient technology. Very good. All right, you ready to crack something else? Yeah, open, so we, we oh. actually brought Wait. one more kind of cool thing to try. Oh, man. Um, if we had time. And Jason's got it right here. So this Maybe is the exact opposite of a TV. One of yes. you know, a small thing. This is uh, a Rismo. Now, Bridget, um, uh, Carrie did this earlier yeah. uh, in the year in September. This was a kind of a hot toy uh, this Christmas. Um, it's it's in a toy. It's a toy that evolves as um, you know. As kids, uh, and they expect their toys to change over time. They're used to video games. They're used to games where they can download new skins, they can buy new, um, you know, they can buy new cosmetics, they can get new weapons. So uh, increasingly toy manufacturers that make physical toys are having to incorporate that type of technology into them. And this is one of those kind of devices that it actually sort of adapts and changes its shape as you interact with it. And so what we thought is, yeah, I'm sorry, Rismo. It would be kind of fun to do a little bit of an autopsy and see what it really looks like on the inside. All right, so let's do it. Let's get Break started it here. So normally you would def. I'm also going to say so. Like this, uh, this toy, um, it has some moving parts. It it, it looks like a little fuzzy uh, ball right now, but it actually has these things that parts that come out. Now you're specifically told not to do what I'm doing. Doing this will can break the motors, can break the servos. Um, it's to be, so, so it's supposed to be part of the natural evolution of this th that's thing, right? That's right. But, it, but as a kid, I oh, was always the kid. Yeah, 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 I'm immediately going to get this thing no and start going, gonna ooh, let's push this down. Okay. So we're going to actually kind of move this. We're going to try to remove this and see what it looks like un uh, inside. First thing we're going to have to do, again, I'm sorry, we have our makeshift scalpel here. You gotta we're going to cut open. The, the casing off of the uh, off the Rismo here. This is like one of those things in the Alien movies where you like cut open one and then all the like the whole fleet comes uh, for you. Oh so yeah. you know. I just I just keep seeing um, Gizmo from uh, Gremlins. Yeah. In the whatnot. And yeah, don't, don't yeah. put this thing in water. Yeah, exactly. don't, don't, don't uh, feed it after you know, midnight. It's, it's, don't get uh, it near water. Don't feed it after midnight. That's, that's you just got to pick the right time zone, I guess, to feed it in. So we're going to cut this off here, and then let's see what we can do. 
Uh -oh. It's still going to make noises. Oh, that, was, that was a chirp of. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh oh, I'm sorry. I don't think. Do Rizmo. my. Do my best here to. Cut the. Uh, this one we did not pre cook at all. We decided we would sort of do it live to give everybody that kind of experience that we have. A lot of the times when we take these devices apart, you know, we, we're very sort of slow, we're methodical. Yeah. Like Jason said, I, I don't do this to destroy devices. I don't like doing that. It does pain me to, to, to have the TV that's probably, well, it's not going back together. Who am I kidding? A few, um, a, a few years ago at CES, we did another toy and we had to use uh, the, with the BB-8 Sphero device and we had to use a Dremel to cut that thing in half. Ooh, boy, the audience was not happy about us cutting up BB-8. Poor BB-8, man. Yeah. Maybe they like him better than the uh, uh, Yeah, there the hasn't been Rizmo the same reaction to, to, no to Rizmo about the as Rizmo. there was to BB-8. Well, you know, it's, it's the fact that we've all had to deal with so many of these motorized toys. It's a little bit of revenge. Ooh. And again, we, we do some of these to see that the fact that a lot of these devices, even toys, and this is a fairly, if I remember, reasonably priced under $100 kind of toy, maybe even under $50. I think $30. I think $30. $30, $30 oh, something like but that. But seeing how much technology and the chips there are in some of these things is really interesting. And it, it does get to the fact that the, you know, the technology uh, revolution is touching more and more parts uh, of the world. Yeah. So we can see our first look inside yeah, it's Rizmo here. This Hard plastic shell. Oh, it's, it's still it's a talking. Kitty. Okay, it's a kitty. now it's meowing at me. That yeah, makes me no. feel even worse. <laughs> oh no! Let's see what we can do here. So you can kind of see some of the plastic parts. This part was designed to be a tail um, to pop up, and it looks like it has these kind of little plastic um, parts that move. Here are the feet. I don't know, cats. We might need the might need we the might, heat gun. We might have to I, break I, the I, heat I, gun I, out I, I got to say, I, I encourage my children to watch the videos. That Maybe I not this one. See, no, no, no. They're, they're not going to see this one. Uh, this <laughs> would ruin a lot of uh, a lot of toys around. A lot the of house. toys for them. Either that, or would encourage them to go find my oh, razors. Uh, that, and, that's and, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Break it out. Safe. No, we want we want the this, kids to be this safe. This video will be banned in the Katzmeyer household. Yeah. No. All right. So here we have a de-skinned Rizmo or something like that. Um, oh. We, I think you activated Rockstar mode there. I, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Everybody can kind of see that. And, and that's kind of creepy it, it, it looking. It was like this, you know, but you can also see like uh, how it unfolds. Oh, that's it cute. It doubles unfolds. as a hand puppet yeah. as oh, no. well. It's, that's now, it's now a hand puppet. Not that's okay. intended use there. I might, I might take this with me. It's a, it's a little. Like, Rizmo you know. lives. Rizmo lives. It's, it's still I think, going. I think there Rizmo go. might be happier as a, as a hand uh, puppet it might than be. as a little robot device. Riz Rizmo's, you know. Very expressive. Making his ascension. Yeah, maybe he's going to help disembody his own robot <laughs> interior. That's you, you right. Give him, give him a heat gun. You think he'll be able to work it? I don't know. You never know. I There's mean, only one way to find out, Jason. That's right. Let's let's do it. Let's so do I'm going to I'm going to try to pop off some of the plastic so that we can see the actual circuits uh, that are inside of this thing. They're more than likely through the bottom here, Jason. I'm going to grab one of the What's screwdrivers. Right? You know, we've used a variety of tools <laughs> over the years to actually crack things open. Um, and so it's, it, we used to have to find them, you know, on the internet or that order them specialty. But now the maker community and the sort of the, the DIY repair community, they're much easier to find nowadays. It's also yes. easier to find information online about how to fix your own gadgets. Um, there's uh, a great... Uh -oh. Batteries included. Oh, batteries. batteries definitely included there's, in this one. There's a great picture. Okay. There's a great picture on the internet uh, of when we... Cracked open, Bill cracked open the first iPad. And in it, there's about, this was before we had these great tools. So there's a spatula and a butter knife and all kinds of things just sticking in the sides where we were trying to pop free nice. the screen um, from the back. So that's probably our, our most uh, famous, most viral um, cracking open photo. Although, actually, the ver we also cracked open the very first iPhone in 2007. And that photo, that was, this was before these teardowns were really popular. And that photo actually got picked up by Time Magazine um, and was used at the time when people used to actually buy magazines back then. Uh, and so that was used uh, and popularized from that. So Cracking Open on Tech Republic has a, a really great history. And now the um, Cracking Open uh, stories and um, the galleries of photos published on Tech Republic, and, and then the videos for Cracking Open 
published on CNET. So Definitely. it's been a, a really YouTube good channel, partnership. Yeah. yeah, especially on the YouTube channel. So, so Bill, are you trying to get to the servos here? What do I'm you trying it? to get to. So what we've been able to do is we've been able to take the two bottom port parts off here. And what you find with toys, I often find with kids' toys like this, yep. they're often pretty rugged. I mean, they're designed to be oh, yeah. kind of thrown around and dropped. So where you saw in there, the plastic was kind of flimsy. We could bend it. We could take it off. Yep. This, this is pretty heavy-duty stuff. And so yeah. that's, that's because, you know, kids are going to drop these things, and they're going to be rough with them, and manufacturers don't want them to break. So the Rizmo's first time you them, drop it. This Rizmo is still fully functional, right? You haven't really yeah, broken anything. I yet. haven't really broken yeah, anything, I don't think. Yep. But, yeah, we're probably going to get there to the fart while I we'll will. See. So. <laughs> I want to, it does have several sort of sensors in it. I want the light, the eyes light up. I'd like to see the, um, uh, the circuit board. There's a circuit board. Looks I, like a speaker I, I in there. I see a circuit board peeking yep. out under there. So we're going to see if we can't brain, poke though. that out. Yeah. Well, oh, you, oh, I suspect the brain is not up here in the head. Oh, really? And it's down in the body. Oh, okay. It you is, know, it, it would be safer alien. to put it in the body. Oh. Let's see if this can come out this way. No, it's not going to come out that way. I'm not going to be able to pop that <laughs> loose. It's probably a uh, servo driven that actually makes this pop and go up and down. There's so. some other toys. Well, one of the toys you cracked open for CNET Magazine a few years ago. Well, we've cracked open all kinds of things. Um, we did the Sphero. Yeah. Uh, we did the. Um, we've done the Snapchat goggles, uh, and glasses. Yeah. We did those. Connected soccer we've done ball. Connected so the Adidas connected soccer ball. That was really popular. That was a lot of fun. Um, we've done all kinds of devices here. There's that circuit board. Yeah, uh, so I'm going to take it off from the back out. here, see if I can't get this to pop loose. Very good. We're, uh, we're on a race against time. To yeah, we're kind of uh, rushing here so I can get it as far along as uh, I can. I'm just can impressed here. that you're not even using a power drill, just going in there with the hand <laughs> thing and taking it right apart. Uh, let's see. And yeah. you still haven't deployed the heat gun, so just want to let you know it's really I, I, I still Cats haven't is deployed ready. the heat gun. With the heat gun. Let me see what we can do with this. Let's let's see if we can make the screw go out more. Oh okay. no, yeah, okay. That's not going to help. Let me see if I uh, can. Oh, here it goes. Let me see if I can do this. Put the crack and crack and open right here. Oof. Yeah, when we say crack and open. Oh wow. Okay. So I'm going to be a little rough with it. It's not that tough. Oh. Ooh. Things thrown in the lot. audience. This is a, this is like a first. Uh, first time I've ever seen Bill force one open. I usually don't do this. I really don't. But uh, we're running low on time. So you can. Feel about that. Probably so not very oh, yeah, good. I, he doesn't want to see this. No, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, he doesn't, I, want, he doesn't I want to watch this. I'd give him nightmares. So <laughs> here you can. Well. We can actually see the servos now. Cool. So you can see the motors here. Um, over here and over here that, that run the uh, gears for the various flaps and um, the little uh, spring-loaded sort of ears here and things like that. You can also start to see the circuit board inside. There's a bunch inside. of little circuit boards. Yeah, there's a yeah. bunch of little circuit boards in down in there. I don't know if I, I can. I want to say there's at least six surf, uh, circuit boards in this, which yeah. is pretty amazing when you think about a $30 toy. It, it, again, it talks about how far... The tech revolution has come to where these things are so um, are those long screws? inexpensive. Yeah, they you are. You can They're put them in a lot screws. of different places. Yeah. It's like plastic. Yeah, so you can clearly tell this was not meant to be taken apart. <laughs> the plastic the is also really, really sturdy. Um, so yeah. I, I'm trying to do it and not hurt myself. That's Good. what you know, I'm trying to do. Um, we, but you can kind of see that one of the circuit boards here. And that's what I meant about the circuit board is probably not going to be in the head or the brain. Right, right. It's going to be down here. So all of the circuits that are doing the motion detection, doing the signal processing, is, um, is all on this circuit board here. Yeah. The speaker um, that Good the sounds job. play for are on this. Um, so yeah, the, the even their little tool. The yeah, even okay. this little toy is packed with all kinds of technology, and now it just looks creepy. It kind of <laughs> looks like the uh, Rizmo skeleton there. There's the, there's the Rizmo puppet. Yeah, uh, it's not gonna stand. All right, there it is, <laughs> Samsung TV and Rizmo toy. Uh, we've done them both. Thank you, Bill Detweiler. Thank you, David Katzmeyer. for your uh, insights as well. Yes. Can you thank Rizmo, everybody? Thank you. <laughs>